Hey, I'm Colin, and today I'm going to show you how to lay a curved paving stone walkway. For this specific project, we're going to be laying a walkway that has a lot of curves. It's also going to be downhill, which adds a little bit of complexity. Uh, this project used to be a paving stone walkway that had failed because it was laid partially on top of a stump. We've already done our excavation and base prep. If you want to know anything more about that, you can watch our video, How to Lay a Paver Base. With our gravel base prepared, we can jump right into our first step, which is screeding the bedding layer. We're going to be using washed concrete sand, and in order to achieve a perfect one inch uniform of bedding layer, we're going to use these one inch outside diameter metal square tubing. And to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, we're going to start at the top of our project and work our way down. So we've set some of our rails. I just wanted to touch really quickly that we're going to be working with our slope there's an uh, immense amount of natural grade here, and that's okay if it uh, exceeds the ICBI specifications on slope for paving stones, but it's just always better and easier to work with your slope. So because we have a few different transitions here, in order to lay the rails to make it the screening a lot easier and more efficient, we've laid the rail with each different transition and grade. That way we can make sure we um, split whatever differences we can to make this look as gradual as possible. Also, it's always good to double check your rails at any absolutes like asphalt or concrete that you're matching up with. Just kind of slide the paver up there. If you need to beat your rail down a little bit, that's no problem. Uh, within an eighth or a quarter of an inch is tolerable. So because of our natural slope that we have here, uh, with our gravel we have graded a lot of it by eye and we're going to do the same thing with our sand in some spots. We're also going to use our eye and just kind of do things naturally by hand. Um, and it's best to think about going about this uh, like an artist, you're just kind of do it as best as you can and flat naturally. When working with long screed rails and natural grade, occasionally you have some humps and bumps. So if your rail comes up on you and bows like this, that's fine. Just make sure you apply force with your screed board and work with those transitions instead of against them. So when working with curves, especially tight curves, um, and you have longer screed rails, sometimes it's hard to judge where to place a rail. Just cover as much area as you can for as straight as you can. If you have really tight radiuses, sometimes it's easier to use shorter rails. Uh, but as long as your board can get the, the edges and the voids that aren't filled, then you're good to go. With the majority of our fields screeded, we're gonna go back and we're gonna fill our voids with some fresh sand. We're just gonna toss in with a shovel and then smooth it out with a trowel. So our next step is to lay our stones. Uh, for this specific project, we have to lay a certain pattern. Uh, otherwise, for some curved walkways or patios, you can kind of gradually uh, move your stones with the radius and jog it and uh, avoid a lot of cuts that way. But since we're doing a pattern, uh, we're gonna have to cut all the edges into our curves. We wanna make sure that we start from a square corner because we're working with a pattern. If you want more information on how to make a square corner, we have a video called How to Make a Square Corner. To improve efficiency when laying, it's always best to use a click and drop method. What you want to do is take a stone, butt it up to a corner and slide it down versus setting the stone in the sand and then trying to tuck it towards itself. So we're nearing the end of our walkway, we're laying our field. And when you're dealing with a steep grade, we always recommend that you lay uphill uh, we chose to lay downhill because we wanted to avoid a lot of cuts at the top of our project. You can do that as well. You just want to make sure that you tap your stones and keep them straight and uh, shift them uphill to keep your lines nice and square. We finished laying our field and we're going to get ready to mark our, for our cuts. We just want to make sure that we spend some time adjusting lines. I'm going to use this paver adjuster. 
Um, you, know, you can also use a screwdriver or a crowbar, whatever fits between the stones. Adjust your lines before you mark for your cuts, that way after you cut and you adjust later, it doesn't look like the lines don't work. The reason you want to adjust your stones before you cut for your border is if you cut your border in now and then you go to adjust your lines later if you notice that some of them are off, it can move your curved cuts away from the border and it won't look good. We've laid our field, we've checked to make sure everything's square and straight, now we can start marking our stones. So what we're going to do is we have this half inch uh, PVC conduit and it has couplers on the end so for longer curves it works nicer because we can connect them. And what we need to do is right here we know our border is going to end here. We're going to take our pipe and we're going to line it up and then it's easier if you have multiple people to do this to hold the pipe in place but basically if you just measure from the edge to give yourself room for your border and six to eight inches for your restraint then you just make a mark, connect it with the pipe and then you can start cutting your curve. If you have to mark a long curve yourself the easiest way to do that is take multiple stacks of stones to hold down portions of the pipe about every four feet and then make the marks yourself. It works pretty good. So we've marked one side of our curve here and we're going to start it a little wide. It's about six feet, uh, but we want to neck it down to about 48 inches. So what we'll do is we'll take our tape measure, we'll make multiple marks uh, from one end to the other and then we'll use those marks to, as a guide for our pipe to make sure that we're perfectly um, the same width all the way throughout this part of the curve. We've marked all of our curves and now what we're going to do for good measure is we're going to take a demo saw and we're going to score these lines. The reason we do this is especially if you're working with a wet table saw or a wet demo saw the line from the paper marker will wash off, so the score gives you a good mark that you can reuse even if it's wet. Um, and if you want more information on how to cut a paving stone, you can watch our video, Six Different Ways to Cut a Paving Stone. We finished cutting in our field, and now we can start laying our border stone. Majority of our curves are pretty gradual to where we can just lay the border stone soldier and have a little bit of gappage, and that's fine. Uh, wherever the radius gets a little bit tighter, we might need to cut our stones themselves and give them a little bit of a bevel to make it a little bit more smooth. We've laid and cut in our border, and now we can start installing our edge restraint. We're gonna be using snap edge, and since we're doing curves, we're just gonna take our snap edge cutters or some scissors, just cut every, oh, third rib or so, and that way you can do outside and inside curves. If you have any more questions about how to install snap edge, you can watch our video, How to Install Snap Edge. We've installed our edge restraint, we covered it up with some sand so it wouldn't get warped in the sun. Now all we have to do is sweep in our joint sand, compact our stones, and you can enjoy your walkway.